I think we're live. Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening. Uh, here, coming to you from a fairly sunny, mild winter morning here in Manchester. Uh, I've got a bit of a cold. I uh, apologise for that. Uh, I've been a bit ill over the past few days. <coughs> that wasn't uh, put on, by the way. Uh, so, but I'm I'm getting back to back to normal now. Great to see you all online. Good morning, uh, Robert and Simon and uh, Lokesh and Ronnie and oh my goodness, Pierre, all all sorts of people, Pierre, Nabi, and uh, and Kit and Expo Code. Welcome. Um, there's all sorts of people here already. Man Lobu, good morning. Um, I'm drinking my second coffee. Uh, does help me. And Simon, there we go. See, I'm holding the mug the right way around. Or was it was it uh, was it uh, Jacob that uh, called me up for that before? Anyway, good morning. Good morning. Good morning, Al. Yeah, unseasonably warm. My run this morning, I only had a couple of layers on, uh, which is quite unusual. A couple of thin layers too, uh, which is nice. Uh, although I do like it cold. Anyway, so um, uh, this is live stream number six, I think. So the seventh live stream. Uh, we're still going strong. It's great to see you all uh, online. Um, today, uh, what I thought we could do is have a bit of fun and just build a little bit on top of the uh, um, the bookshop tutorial that we've been looking at. Just just to remind ourselves, uh, I'll, I'll go there shortly. Uh, we've been following that tutorial on developers.sab.com on the tutorial navigator. And we got to the end of it last week. We got to the end of it. So last week was the uh, 15th of February. And we finally got to the end. And... There was a, I was playing around and having a think, uh, and rather than rush into the next bit, which might be uh, to start thinking about moving this stuff to the Web IDE and maybe deploying to uh, Cloud Foundry, which we will do uh, eventually, um, I think it's I think it's nice to go slow and deep. Uh, so that's what we're going to do. Well, sorry, Ronnie, I know um, I I do have coffee first of all. Um, Barbaric is a little bit extreme, but <laughs> okay, barbaric, barbaric coffee. Maybe I need a, a mug saying barbaric on the front. Um, uh, so yeah, slow and slow and deep. And uh, I, I've got I've got an idea uh, that I was thinking about yesterday, which is to maybe build our own um, our own uh, application programming model. Uh, data model based upon Northwind. I mean, I really like Northwind, and it's something we're familiar with. And uh, morning, Maxi. And um, uh, you know, I, I think I think it's a good way to move to the next step really slowly. We can have a play around a little bit with the REPL as well. Um, so maybe we'll do that. Also, though, um, I'm thinking about. Let me know what you think in the in the uh, chat here. Uh, I'm thinking about doing another one of those occasional. Uh, midweek slots so that will be Wednesday next week so Wednesday the 27th I'll keep it at the same midweek slot time which will be 3 p.m. Manchester time um, so we, again so we can catch uh, some US folks uh, because I want to dig in a little bit to the uh, the language server protocol um, so I'm, I'm maybe keeping these sort of midweek live streams to do uh, slightly off-piste stuff or more off-piste than uh, than normal, uh, but I'll just show you something. I I I, uh, I know. Sorry, Simon. I, <laughs> well, you are I, maybe you're an out night owl. I mean, you've got big enough coffee mugs to, to keep you going. Um, so uh, let me just switch to the main scene here, and um, I I sort of broke it about half an hour ago, but I managed to fix it in the last five minutes. But I just wanted to show you um, something. Uh, we, we've been using VS Code, and uh, we'll, we'll continue to use VS Code because it's, it's really, really nice. And VS Code, um, well, let's let's remind ourselves. VS Code, uh, oh yeah, let's just let's, let's start it. Has a, a plugin. And that plugin. Oh, by the way, where's the? Um, I did start the. Oh, it's over here. There you go for Srikanth. I did start the Keycaster, but it's on the different different monitor. 
for some reason. Um, and if we look here, we've got this uh, CDS language support uh, via, where does it say here, via LSP, uh, via language server protocol. So one of the really nice things, as we've seen, um, and we'll see that, I won't demonstrate it now because we will see it shortly, um, is it's got um, sort of uh, error correction or er it points out errors in your CDS. It will uh, give you all sorts of uh, command completion and syntax completion features. And that's down to this, uh, this mechanism, which uh, the CAPM folks in SAP have been using based upon this language server protocol that came from Microsoft. Um, I explained it in a previous live stream, so catch the recording for that. Uh, by the way, um, I'm annotating the live streams now, so I'm, I'm trying to catch up with what I've done so far, um, but I intend to annotate each live stream after I've done it so that we can, you know, we can have a, uh, a text reference to what we covered in each hour and then links so you can click on them to go straight to the particular part in the live stream at that, you know, 14 minutes and 27 seconds we talked about X. Uh, so uh, let me know what you think, uh, if that's useful or not. Um, uh, so how, where were we? Oh yeah, so the language server protocol um, is a really nice way of implementing language features once and then making those language features like, uh, you know, uh, auto completion and so on uh, and error uh, notifications. What, what's the word? Error highlighting? Yeah, highlighting of errors available in multiple different editors and IDEs. If we look actually at... Um, uh, the plugin that SAP supply, which in that previous stream uh, we installed, we'll see something quite interesting. So actually, let's let's do that. We got we get the plugin. Where's my browser here? Let's have another browser window, and uh, let's go here. Tools. Uh, thanks, Simon. Uh, yeah. I, I, I find it useful, so I'm, I'm guessing other people do as well. I've had some good feedback already, um, so yeah, I think I'll, it's, it's quite a lot of work, but I'll, I'll you know, I'll get better at it. Um, so down here, I'll make this a little bit bigger. Down here is where you go and get the the language support, the CDS language support for VS Code, and it's a, in the form of this .vsix file, which is um, this sort of Visual Studio extension thing. So let's download that. Um, I've already got it installed here. Uh, but, um, yes, it is more searchable. Yes, exactly. Uh, so, uh, waiting for tools. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Um, excuse me, if it doesn't download, I've got it in the trash so we can dig it out. Because what I want to do is have a look inside it uh, to see what we've got there. It's not, not, oh, there we go, it's downloaded. Okay, cool. So, let's close that for a second. And let's go to my terminal here and have a look. So it's a .vsix, is that big enough? It's a .vsix file. And um, actually what that was, I was curious what, what that is. We can actually rename that. Uh, move vs code, uh, vs code dot tgz. It's, it's a gzipped tarball actually. Uh, let's just go into a, a folder here, create a new folder and unpack it. So uh, tar, XZF, VS Code, there we go, into there. And now let's have a look. Uh, so in fact, we get what's inside the VS Code extension. And there's a lot of stuff in here. Uh, part of that relating to how the, the extension works with VS Code itself and everything. Um, but one really interesting thing is if we have a look at the um, node modules inside the uh, extension bundle, uh, yeah, exactly. Yes, command line, of course, command line, half the win. Uh, we, we also see that we've got some at SAP uh, node modules. Uh, so let's have a look in there. We've got a couple. We've got a CDS compiler, which is, as we've, we've noticed a CDS compiler uh, module before, that's a central, this is my word, that seems to be a central node module within the whole CDS bundle. In fact, let's just open up another terminal here. Let's make that a little bit bigger. Um, uh, npm info uh, SAP CDS. Uh, we'll see that one of the key dependencies of the uh, CDS uh, package or bundle or module 
uh, what word am I going to use today? I don't know, uh, is the CDS compiler. Notice also, by the way, that since uh, we had uh, Christian Georgi on the stream a couple of weeks ago, that was on Friday the 8th of, um, oh, Friday the 8th of February, uh, we saw that uh, CDS, the CDS package was going to be updated and it went from 3.0.0 to 3.5.0. But since then, we'll have a look at the change log shortly, we've had another couple of sort of point updates. So we're now at 3.5.2. Um, now, uh, just had a text here. Uh, what's he saying here? There's a guy coming around to install some... Oh, perfect. I'll be with you at 9.30. Okay, I can ignore that for now. Uh, yeah, I'm having some um, Nest cameras and doorbells installed and everything. Uh, I haven't got a, a transformer and it's lots of cables and, you know, let somebody else do it who knows what they're doing. Anyway, so I can ignore that for now because it's not coming until we finish the live stream. Um, so, uh, where were we? Yes, uh, let's, have, so let's go back to having a look inside there. And we've got the CDS compiler, which we know is like a central part of the whole CDS bundle. But also we've got um, the... CDS LSP module, which we don't have, I don't think, as part of that package. Uh, where was that? Uh, uh, oh, actually, we got rid of it, didn't we? Sorry, let's do that again. Uh, info uh, CDS compile QL reflect services. General. No, exactly. So CDS LSP is sort of specific to this. Uh, this, this VSIX bundle for VS Code. And CDS LSP, as we can sort of guess from the name, is the language server protocol implementation of the CDS language service for this VS Code extension. So the extension plugs into VS Code and the extension uses within it, somebody walking across the fields there, the extension uses within it this language server protocol implementation that knows about CDS. And of course it uses a CDS compiler to work out stuff. Um, so one of the really interesting things is that I managed to rip out this CDS LSP um, from here and sort of use it standalone. Uh, let me ex explain what that means. Uh, I've got, uh, there's, there's a, uh, let's go here. There's a um, uh, auto Zimu. I had a quick look for uh, language clients. So you have a language client, which is VS Code, for example, and a language server that knows about a specific language. But it's a language client for uh, Vim. So I thought, why not find out if I could make this work? Um, there's all sorts of stuff here. I've been hacking around with it uh, and I've managed to get it working. We'll dig into this maybe in the, um, uh, in the uh, occasional midweek slot. But I just wanted to show you very briefly, if we now go, I've got the, uh, configuration in my Vim here, which is this stuff. Um, and I've, I've, got, I've got this little script I've written, start CDS LSP there uh, on line 99, which uh, basically invokes uh, a bit of uh, a, a, a JavaScript, Node.js JavaScript thing within the CDS LSP uh, package to start listening. Um, and if we now go into, um, let's go into my bookshop, my bookshop, uh, DBC, uh, data model. Um, you can see at the bottom there, we've got this little message, LC, language client. And it's all started, started up. And now if I say, for example, ent, and then language completion, entity, amazing. So I can say entity, banana, and then we can say something like uh, something, uh, association to, so that's all in Vim, uh, which I quite like actually, uh, because I do like Vim. And uh, I mean, at the moment, you know, for example, if I break that by get rid getting rid of the, uh, the, uh, the open curly brackets, for example, we can see here in this little left-hand gutter, we've got some errors here. So there's an error saying down at the bottom, mismatched key, expecting one of those symbols here. Uh, extraneous identifier. So all these things are coming from the CDS LSP package through a language server protocol uh, with a language server protocol client implementation um, uh, in Vim. So why don't we dig into that a little bit more because I do like Vim and it, it teaches me a little bit more about these different technologies. What I haven't got in Vim, of course, and what the LSP doesn't provide or the language server implementation doesn't provide is syntax highlighting. So maybe if you fancy it, we could start thinking about doing a, uh, a color scheme, some syntax highlighting for Vim, for any any Vim. I know that, uh, for example, I can see um, 
Volker there is uh, is a Vim user, so maybe we'll do that as well. Start to sort of you know move across features uh, to uh, Vim as well, because why not? Uh, did I just anchor my browser window to the right by hockey? Yes, I'm using Spectacle. You can't see under the under the little um, my little purple bar there. You can't see my uh, thing there, but Spectacle is really good. Um, I'll just do, click that there because you can see the menu at least. So there's all sorts of hotkeys here which I I can't do without. So for example, if I want to anchor that to the uh, right half or the right two thirds or the right third or the left, or I can bring it to the other window and so on, or up there. For example, um, uh, I could do that. Uh, you know, there's all sorts of different things. I can put it in the center. Uh, you know, there's lots of different things. So if you're using Mac OS, Spectacle is wonderful. Anyway, um, that's enough of that. So uh, let me know if you'd be interested in uh, next Wednesday, hacking around a little bit more and finding out about how this uh, language server works and getting some goodies from the CDS LSP package and so on. Okay, so we'll leave that for now. Uh, let's get out of there. Uh, what I thought I'd do then is with you, uh, one of the few features Windows got, yes, exactly. It, it, it does make a big difference, Ronnie. Yeah, it really does. Um, it's one of the things I've installed right at the start of my Mac OS journey. Um, okay, so uh, I suggest uh, that we start a new CDS project, uh, start a new CAP project with CDS in it. And by the way, um, if we have a look, I've got a little shortcut here as well, um, which I, um, I've just added the other day, which is to be able to go to uh, the at SAP module root, the global module, to have a look at stuff. So if I can, I can say, for example, um, uh, if I start Ranger and go go C, I can go straight there and go to the at SAP CDS. I'm, I'm pointing to the screen with my finger. It's not really good. You know, uh, SAP CDS module area here. You know, and I, I go down here and I'm looking at the node modules. We can see, for example, um, the uh, the change log. Uh, let's go into that, and we can see, for example, that. Down there last week, we had the version 3.5, sorry, two weeks ago, 3.5.0 released on the day before our live stream. Of course, it goes into the Nexus, which is this SAP sort of central. Holy uh, Christian pushed the button and it was live. And then since then, we've had a couple of changes. So we can see here uh, that we've got uh, 3.5.2, which was released uh, on Wednesday this week, which probably went live on Thursday. So we've now got new projects created with CDS in it. Uh, let's just quit out of there. There we go, quit out of there. So let's go into our project folder and start CDS in it. Um, and I suggest that we um, use Northwind and maybe have our, because one of the things that, about the bookshop that I, I, I wasn't keen on was that the data we have is only it's five books or four books and four authors or whatever it was, which isn't, isn't too conducive to, to learning a bit more about um, the CDS uh, query language and messing around with OData and so on. Uh, Northwind is a, you know, we all know Northwind. Who doesn't know Northwind? Put your hand up if you don't know Northwind. Um, it's a good way of sort of, you know, slowly getting to grips with more CDS stuff and exploring also. There's something I came across uh, the other day that was a little bit subtle and I only learned about it because I was sort of transferring Northwind into a CDS model. Um, so maybe that's a project we could do us, you know, we could do ourselves all together, do some sort of, um, uh, you know, Northwind uh, cap model. Uh, who's that person there? Oh, hello. Um, so CDS in it, and let's call it North Breeze, um, purely because it's gonna be a cut down version of North, Northwind. CDS in it, North Breeze. Uh, somebody in the field, like, what are they doing in the field? Hmm, security. Not quite sure what they're doing. I'll keep an eye on him. Uh, yeah, okay, anyway. Um, so with project creation was successful. Um, in fact, let's start uh, code from here. We don't need that anymore. And we also don't need that. Okay, code, let's go in there. Let's get into code. Uh, how are we doing for time? 20 past uh, uh, eight already. Um, well, it's a, it's a good question, Simon. Um, Northwind, I did look into it once. Uh, but I didn't, I did, uh, rem I, I can't remember, but um, it's quite a venerable database. And I quite like it. So we've got our uh, initial folder structure here and uh, which we're all familiar with. So why don't we just go ahead and create 
uh, let's go into here and create our, our data model. Okay, so we know what we're doing now from the tutorial. So I'm gonna say new DB, and I'm gonna call it model.cds, just because you know, let's just do the most, the simplest thing that could possibly work. Notice again, we're still having that problem with, um, uh, with uh, VS Code about the thing being refreshed. So I'm gonna refresh Explorer, there it is, there's DB model. Okay, good. So let's go to, um, let's go now to uh, the browser and bring it across here with my shortcuts again. And I use this a lot. So here's, so I think uh, one, um, yes, you can, ah, yes, Pierre, that's a really good point. You can create the database folder and the uh, serve folder with CDS in it. In fact, why don't we do this here? So let's see. Um, uh, where are we here? Uh, where's, where's my, oh, there it is there. Uh, there, okay. if I say CDS help in it, um, there's all sorts of different things here and we can see here CDS init project dash dash module serve comma DB. It's relatively new. Um, yes, great point Pierre and thank you for pointing that out. That's, this is exactly the, the sort of thing I really like about this uh, that you know, you're telling me and uh, everybody else what's going on. I'm just gonna just get a look out the window. There's some, we've had some weird, this is why I'm getting cameras installed. There's some weird sort of security things going on. There's somebody out the window, one second. Okay, well he's got a dog with him, which is a good thing, a good sign I suppose. He's walking in a field next door. He looks a bit stoned actually, or just drunk, I don't know. Uh, there's only one of them, so um, maybe I could have him if uh, push came to shove. Uh, yeah, I think I could, I've had, had enough coffee. Um, okay, so, um, where are we? Yes, oh yes, yeah. so here's our um, products data. Okay, we're all familiar with this. In fact, let's have a look at the uh, JSON format, which is a lot nicer. So what I suggest is, um, we may not finish it today, because I, I, I do fancy looking into doing a little bit of promise-related uh, ES6 JavaScript um, using Axios. I'll tell you what that is in a second. So we can learn a little bit more uh, JavaScript, uh, which will stand us in very good stead for you know this Node.js based uh, cap stuff. Um, and what, what I suggest we do is build a cut down version of Northwind, see if we can get as near to a cut down version as Northwind as we, as we can. Um, and a nice sort of subset, I think, of the Northwind uh, data set is, are the products. I always I always look at products because you know I understand what they are. Um, and products have suppliers, and products are also in categories. And you can see here the relationship between uh, a product and its supplier and its category. And when we're building uh, what I suggest, which is the oh, that's just posted a typo there, Memory. Um, uh, when we're building a uh, a model in in CDS, we can sort of start to think about what the uh, the relationships that we uh, define what they actually mean and what you know what we need to do to to relate what we what we want to get from an odata service for example so that's what i think uh, if that's okay with you i think we should do because it is a, it's a nice next next step next small step from this journey so what we need to do is we need to grab this these products um, because what we'll, we'll use the csv import facility that we've used before one thing to note is that if we go down to the end here, uh, that's not all the products. If we, if we have a look, we can see, for example, uh, there are, uh, well, I know there's 77. Why is this taking so long? Um, there are 77 uh, products. And if you can see at the bottom here, uh, we can see there's an OData next link. Okay, so it gives, you, gives us the first 20. And what is going on with this? Um, let's do that again. Maybe that's, uh, is that is that generally? That's just my, my normal test. Okay, so hacking news is working, so it must be okay. The world must be fine. Um, so it must be Northwind. So notice here that we don't get all of them. We can we can get, uh, we get the first 20 and we get this skip token thing. Oh there, okay, it's 77. We get a skip token, um, a uh, little link, which we can follow to get the next and the next and the next. So we'll, you know, we'll have to do a number of skip tokens to get all the products. If we have a look, for example, at the suppliers, uh, we can see here that, uh, why, is, why is it taking so long? We can see, well, we will see, I've looked at this uh, yesterday, uh, we'll see that the, there are, I don't know, 20 odd suppliers uh, and there are fewer than 10 
categories. So we want to grab all that data. There we go. Well, there's this says, thank you, Northwind. There's the uh, there's the supplier. Um, Vim ES6 promises if you go there. Blah, 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 blah. Uh, well, actually, we we're gonna we we did a IIFF uh, FC um, was it when was it oh maybe uh, oh, actually in the in the first live stream um, uh, and uh, yeah this, I think we do we do including me need to practice more with promises and everything uh, and this is a really good uh, reason a good excuse for for learning more of that stuff so why don't we take this. Um, and start to define the data model for, for example, the suppliers and the, uh, let's bring this up here while we have it while we wait, uh, products and also categories. There we go. There's the uh, products and the categories loading here. I have, I have no idea. Um, uh, I, Melo, Daz, are you looking for a book on Java or JavaScript? Um, uh, so let us know. Uh, maybe some folks in the chat can um, uh, can can uh, recommend some books there. I don't know any books on Java that I could recommend. I'm not really a Java person. Um, but if it's JavaScript, then that's a different matter. Um, uh, Fabian, uh, this is uh, just the version three. Uh, it's actually, to be honest, the same. Uh, there is actually a version three of OData. It's a very small version. There's also a version two. Again, I'm not going to request it because it might take too long. Um, uh, but for the for the sake of argument, we're just going to use, my browser command history remembers this because I use, happen to use this the most. Um, thinking in Java, that's a great that's a great recommendation. Nice one, Gary. Yes, definitely. Um, so here we go. So we'll, I'll move this over to the right, at the left hand side, and now in VS Code, we'll start to define our model. Um, I think uh, we should say, in fact, why don't we have a look just to remind ourselves. Uh, there we go. We want to we want to bring something like this definition here. Okay, this is what we're uh, this is what we're aiming for. Okay, uh, we're aiming for a namespace set of entities. Okay, so we'll do that. Um, let's say uh, namespace north breeze. Why don't, why don't we call it that? And uh, notice again that we saw this as well. Notice again that. The, all the stuff here that is getting sort of squiggly underlined, that comes from the interaction between uh, VS Code and the uh, SAP extension for VS Code, which has the language server protocol implementation, the server implementation that knows about CDS and knows that that's not valid CDS, right? So that's, that's, that's what we'll explore next time. So we want um, entity, um, oh, that's quite nice, entity uh, products, and we'll have, well, okay, we we looked into where this CUID came from uh, last time or the time before. That comes from this common.cds, but actually we won't have that. Uh, this is called an aspect, by the way. And that what that will do, uh, we, we could, you can look in the SAP uh, common.cds inside the node modules here um, to, to find out what that is. But basically it will add an ID of type UUID. But let's just do that, sort of do it manually for now, because what we want to do is sort of translate, let's get rid of this thing here, translate um, what we can see here on the, ooh, on the suppliers, uh, sorry, on the products to here. We'll do that step by step. Also, what we want to do is maybe follow and thereby think about the naming convention. It should be foos, it should be foos, really, shouldn't it? Yes, I know. Uh, but then you get bars and bars and, you know, then you sort of run out of sort of funny funny words. So I quite this is another reason why I quite like uh, Northwind because it's got all the words sort of pre thought out for you. Um, so notice here that um, I'm using products and there was a question. I think actually Al asked the question on Twitter. Uh, why and maybe it was uh, other people as well. Um, why is it products plural? Well, there's some best practices that I've pointed to in the uh, SAP Help Portal on the application programming model that suggests that for entity definitions, we go for a capitalized plural, okay? Um, have a look in the documentation for more on that. Um, uh, maybe, maybe Al, if you can remember, you could post a link to the documentation while we, while we hack on this. Um, so, oh yes, You Don't Know JS is a really good book as well. Um, so we're gonna, so what we wanna do as well is uh, c continue with those best practices 
uh, and say, for example, well, we'll have a key and we'll call it ID because that seems to be a nice sort of best practice here. Um, and we'll have that as an integer. OK, that's cool. One of the other best practices is that I've noticed people are following, but I can't see who's following. So uh, I'm th oh, Milio Das, thank you for following. And Nimble123, thank you for following as well. And I think Fabian, you followed before. Thank you very much indeed. I really appreciate your following, by the way. Uh, it, it gives me a, you know, a, a good feeling that people are interested in keeping on, keeping an eye on what's going on. Uh, oh, thank you, Pierre. Thanks for supplying that, uh, that portal link there. Um, okay, so let's go back to the uh, definition here. And one of the other things is that one of the best practices says don't repeat semantics in names. So instead of having product name, we're already inside the product entity definition. So let's just have it as name. And I'm going to call it lowercase just so I can sort of distinguish it to myself. Uh, product name uh, is going to be a string. Um, in fact, we should be looking at the metadata really, but let's just do it from here. Okay, that'll do for now. Uh, so now, that this is interesting. We've got the supplier ID and the category ID. This is sort of the, the sort of the normalized, uh, or we're looking at a mechanic mechanic of the normalized relationship that was built because of the way that the OData was defined, and of course. In the supplier entity set, we'll see all the supplier entities where the IDs correspond here. So this is a way of linking. Um, so we will sort of we want to untranslate that into something in CDS that will then represent that or come out as that um, uh, when we actually compile uh, this stuff. So for for the sake of argument, why don't we say supplier? Okay, oops is an association to, uh, let's make this a little bit bigger here and this a little bit smaller, association to uh, suppliers on uh, supplier, which, is, which refers to this thing, dot, um, uh, what do we want to do? Supplier dot, uh, well, actually, let's leave that for now before we, until we define the supplier, okay? And then in a similar way, we can say category, and notice this is not an association to many or for either the supplier or the category. Um, association to categories on dot, dot, dot. Okay, then we'll continue with this, right? So uh, unit uh, quantity, see, I, I don't like these sort of st uh, staggered colons here, but we'll, we'll continue with that. Unit quantity, um, that's a string as well. And we've got uh, unit price. Uh, that's an uh, that's a that's a that's a decimal, isn't it? Decimal, and that's uh, well. Let's have that nine comma two. Uh, oops, there we go. Um, uh, and so on. Okay, so we, we, I've, I've got something. Okay, rather than you watch me type all this, I've got something that uh, I can copy in here actually to save time because I want to start on the the JavaScript as well. Okay, so let's just jump ahead. And I'm going to do this. Let's um, let's go here. Uh, vi uh, trash. Uh, ba -ba -da -ba -da -ba -da -ba -da. Where is it? Um, hold on a bit. Um, uh, north. Did I put in here? Uh, I did. I did. Okay. Good. So let me just um, let me get a list of that. Here we go, that's it, let's copy that. Right, let's go up here, delete everything and paste that in. There we go, look at that. Um, associations to suppliers and we got this association down there. So let's have a look at this association here. Cool. Um, so we've got integer, string, association to suppliers and the relationship of course here in the suppliers is products association to many products on products.supplier equals dollar self. Okay, so we've got this two-way relationship. I started out first of all by having a single relationship down to suppliers, but we need to supply basically a reverse association as well. So we can go back and map that, those IDs between suppliers and products and categories and products. Okay, and that will come out in, uh, or that will end up with us having uh, navigation properties uh, in the entity definitions in the metadata of our OData service, okay? Um, so here we go, how are we doing for the chat? Use camel case or underscore case style. Um, ooh, yes, from the best practice, exactly. Um, yeah, I know, I, unique quantities should be uh, should be underscored maybe, 
Uh, we'll keep it. We'll, we'll, we'll maybe sort of modify that. Maybe do a pull request and, and change that. Maybe somebody else can change that uh, further down the line. Think about also whether we want to sort of share this and work on this together. That might be quite fun. Um, uh, because you know there's, there's always more to do and I think it always is always nice to learn from each other on you know what other people add to stuff uh, so anyway what we're doing here so we got the we got the products now now we've got the definition of products here what I what I, I think uh, would be nice to do uh, would be to go and start looking at grabbing and using a bit of uh, axi uh, using a bit of uh, HTTP client grabbing the products data so we can create CSV okay um, Let's just have a bit of water here. We've got this. Oh, by the way, um, what I've also got, or what we also want to do, rather, is, um, where are we here, is add uh, a service, okay? So let's let's add a service. So serve service.cds, uh, and uh, we'll, we'll say here, uh, uh, in fact, let's copy it rather than say it. It might be might be easier again. Cats. Uh, oops. Where are we? There we go. Uh, let's go to serve service dot. There we go. Let's just grab that here. Copy that. There we go. Oops. So let's have a look at that. So we all we're doing is we're using this model here. Um, let's put it down here. I thought you could actually. There we go. Yes. There we go. Perfect. So we're using the North Prees uh, namespaced model here from this model file, and let's create a breezy service. And all we're doing is like a one-to-one -one mapping. Um, between uh, the, the products, uh, product definition entities here and what we want to supply on the service. So in a way, there's sort of not much reason here. There's, there's not much going on in this service definition, but that will do for now, okay? So if we have a look um, at, uh, let's just bring up a terminal here and say uh, CDS run. Let's see what happens. Listening on localhost and what a wonderful thing is that we haven't done any, we haven't created a database yet, but we've already got metadata that we can, you know, we can send our UI folks on uh, starting to look at building a UI and then start to sort of build out the database and all the different things we want in the database. Um, see some great conversation going on there about um, uh, learning from Udacity and courses on uh, Google and so on. So uh, this is great. So um, Emmanuel. Uh, are all those tutorials part available on GitHub? Maybe each lesson in one different. Um, which which tutorial? I'm not sure which tutorials you're talking about. Um, are you talking about the tutorials on the tutorial navigator? Because they're all, of course, are all available in the navigator uh, itself, and they're actually the tutorial source code is yes, it's on it's on GitHub. Uh, it's in the SAP uh, tutorial space. Um, and there are other tutorials in the SAP space on GitHub relating to sort of tech and events and so on. Um, are those the tutorials you're talking about? I'm not quite sure. So let, let me know um, in the chat. Uh, just clarify what you mean there, please. So anyway, we've got this here. Um, so now I think it's, so we know that we've got a working sort of service. So now it's time, I think, to turn our attention to grabbing this stuff. Now, one of the things I looked at um, is uh, a, a, in preparation for this, was a, well, I found a nice blog post on different ways to make HTTP requests in Node.js. Because what we want to do is we want to make HTTP requests to the services.odata.org to grab um, products, okay? So we can use the built-in HTTP um, standard library. Uh, I've also used requests, which is like a simplified version of the HTTP standard library. And it's sort of like a bit like the Python HTTP API which is quite nice. But one of the things that I've used once in the past um, for something completely different uh, is Axios. Um, and the reason I think uh, we should use Axios is because um, it's based upon, uh, or it supports promises, which HTTP and, uh, and request I don't think support. Uh, so it's a good way of sort of playing around with promises and get, getting them into our, into our heads um, and just feeling a little bit more comfortable with that sort of stuff. Um, 
if you notice at the bottom of the uh, products, we had this uh, ODATA next link. Now that would suggest if we were doing this super properly, that would suggest we probably want to sort of do some recursion uh, and you know grab the next link and grab the next link and oh there's no more next link so we don't we need to stop grabbing now um, but I think for now uh, we won't use recursion and promises because that's like just a little bit too much we need a bit more coffee for that um, so what we'll do instead is a sort of a, you know a, a halfway house so why don't we create let's go into um, uh, let's bring a new uh, uh, terminal up and let's go into our folder here and let's create a, a project called um, I don't know uh, grab here we go how, how, how's that uh, make the uh, grab and and like good citizens I'm trying to do this sort of uh, you know by default I'm doing some node stuff I'm just going to initialize this with a, a package.json there it is um, so we can start to sort of install stuff so actually one of the things we want to do um, in order to be able to start writing code that will go and make uh, calls to grab this uh, data is npm install axios 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 now notice i'm not using the minus g i'm not installing it globally i'm just installing it local to this particular project this grab project um uh, I'm, well, I did. So, so the question from Emmanuel. I did follow the this. In fact, let's let's go to that tutorial. Um, no .js. The tutorial we followed was this one. Create a business service with Node.js using Visual Studio Code. We got to the end of it. I think you, I think you've been on some of the some of the uh, sessions where we went through this. Uh, but maybe not all of them. So we got to the end of this. So um, what I'm doing, I'm not following any particular tutorial now. I'm just using the knowledge that we've learned from this tutorial to build our own little uh, application program model service based upon Northwind. Um, but along the way, we're going to write a little bit of JavaScript to grab this data and then squirt it in via CSV into our database. So that's what I'm doing. Hopefully that makes sense. Um, so we've got this here. We can install Axios. We're installing it sort of locally. And this is how we use it. So um, we require the, the library, um, which is standard, uh, seems to be quite standard in this sort of uh, pattern. And then we can do an axios.get and it will return as a promise, which we can then use. Let me make it a little bit bigger. Yeah, well, that's better. Uh, which we can then use. Um, uh, yes. Ah, okay. Uh, I've, I've started, thanks. That, that, that's definitely right, uh, Emmanuel. I've started annotating uh, these streams. If we look, in fact, um, Hands on SAP Dev. Uh, if we go there, which will take take us to the the main blog post. Uh, look at the uh, catch the replays link, and now um, you'll see links to annotations of the stream. So I've done the the most recent one, which was last Friday, and I did done the first one as well. So we click on that link, which will lead you to a blog post, and that blog post has then individual timestamps, fifteen minutes and thirty seconds in that describes what what i did um, and then we can you can click on that and that will take you straight to uh, that part in the video at 15 seconds and 30 15 minutes and 30 seconds in and start playing uh straight there okay so hopefully that's that's useful to us um so thanks thanks manuel so basically um this is this is what we can do and the really cool thing because we want to sort of uh, maybe think about making multiple http requests because we've got we've got multiple calls to make to get all the products for example is we can we can use axios.all a little bit like promise.all to make multiple requests and then grab all the answers at once grab all the responses at once so we'll do that okay um i think what we should do is just start slowly by installing axios um, again, I've got, I've, I've played around with this as well. I'm not sort of making this up on the fly from nothing. I've got, a, I've got something that uh, I've got we can refer to if we need to. Uh, but I think it's always good to sort of do it uh, bit by bit as we go together. So we've got access installed, um, and let's just start. Let's just start by saying, for example, creating a grab.js. So uh, const axios equals require uh, Axios. Again, I'm, I'm going to try and do this sort of in a modern way and not use uh, any sort of semicolons or anything sort of you know old-fashioned like that. Um, and why don't we why don't we just play around with Axios first and sort of you know just get a feel for 
what we want to do. Oh yes, I can I can I can put that in the chat there. The the main link uh hands on SAP dev. That's the main link uh that I always use now uh that will go to that blog post. And that blog post has links to everywhere else, including you know uh the, the recordings, including uh the um how to join and also including links to uh, the annotations uh, and so on, and lots of other different things. Uh, so there we go. So we've got that. And what we want to do as well is say, why don't we say axios uh, dot get. Let's just do something really simple. In fact, let's put it down. Um, let's put it down there uh, and say axios dot get. And then let's grab, for example, this. So there we go. Uh, Da, 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 get format equals JSON. And also we can actually even start to say uh, and skip token equals zero. Okay, skip token 20, we'll get, you know, we'll skip the first 20. Skip token equals zero should give us the first um, the first batch of products, which I know uh, because I love uh, products from Northwind. I know it's Chai and Chang and all these different sort of things there. Yeah, there we go, Chai and Chang and so on. So why don't we say here um, and uh, was it dollar skip token or skip token? Um, dollar, yeah, dollar, it's an ODA thing. Of course it is. Skip token equals zero. Okay, axios.get. Okay, so why don't we do that? Um, and then say, for example, um, well, actually, instead of doing this in Vim, we, we want to sort of do some debugging. So let's go back into, let's go back into, uh, into Node.js, uh, into Node.js, into VS Code. Um, uh, or even console.log. Okay, let's just do that. All we've got is that. Let's see what we get, first of all. Node grab.js. It's a promise, okay? Um, so basically, the result of a get is this promise thing here. Let's just kill that for, for a second. So that's why in the line four here, um, the, the, the way of doing this is using a dot then. Okay, so why don't we why don't we modify that and say in fact let's just format this a little bit nicely uh, dot get dot then now let's do the same thing then console log now notice we're not we're not actually calling console log with brackets we're just we're just pointing to the console dot log function but because what then expects is a function to run, this is exactly what we need. It's, it's just a really uh, in, interesting and subtle way of thinking about sort of chaining different functions together. And as we'll build up over the maybe, well, looking at the time, um, over the next uh, maybe couple of streams, um, what I might do is actually show you uh, what we want to end up with so we can get a feel for where we're going with this we can sort of chain together different processes, almost like a you know a gauntlet that the data runs through. And then once we've done that, we can actually start to build up multiple requests that then will coalesce into a single sort of result that we can then process. So let's just do this nice and slowly though. So there we go, console.log, uh, and then do that again um, here. And we get the same, we should get the same thing actually. We should get the, well, not the same thing. We don't get a log of a promise. Where uh, is this is this the this O data Northwind is very very oh there we go okay fine took a long time but notice what we get we get the results you can see at the bottom there um, it's probably behind my head isn't it so let me move that up to the top um, here yeah there we go um, we get the output okay so we get actually the uh, the object the Axios object that we can then play with okay and. And, and really what we can do is, yeah, it was super slow yesterday, was it yesterday as well? Thanks, Maxi, thanks for confirming that. What we wanna do is start building up um, multiple calls to grab into a single result. So actually, why don't we do that? Why don't we try and get that done um, manually first of all, then we'll sort of automate it a little bit, make it a little bit nicer. Why don't we get that done now? So let's say, let's go back into the function here and um, we'll change this to all. Okay, so what we want to do is, why don't we say here, const, um, and again, uh, I think we want that sort of format. Uh, base URL equals, uh, let's, uh, there we go, let's 
put that in there. Ba -ba -da -ba -da -ba -da -ba -da. There we go. Um, let's just do it really manually for now uh, and then build up from there. There's the base URL. And so we can say all, and we can see down below here, this is how we do it. So it's actually just a sequence of axios.get base URL plus zero. Okay, and we'll have another one. Oops. Uh, let's just do, um, just get the first two for now. So we're now grabbing or making two HTTP requests to Northwind, one for the first batch of 20 and one for the second batch of 20. Um, and in fact, why don't we, uh, rather than console.log, let's actually go into this and just do a debug, uh, because why not? Because debug allows us to sort of play around with this a little bit. So let's go and have a look at this here. Let's make this full screen. Uh, and let's bring up the debug console. That's a little bit big, actually. Um, debug console. And why don't we also, um, uh, let's change that to, um, there we go. Let's have it as a sort of a function definition like this so we can put a breakpoint on this single line here, console.log x, like that, okay? Uh, there. Okay, let's save that. Now put a breakpoint on line 12 with F9. I've learned a shortcut where to put a breakpoint. Uh, and then let's run it and see what happens. Uh, this may, may all explode, but let's just run it with F5. Uh, debugger attached. And hopefully it's making these two requests now. Uh, let's just see. Debugger attached. There we go. Okay, so we've got now uh, into the uh, then part of this promise chain. So theoretically, let's well let's have a look what's in X because this is exactly the reason why I, I you know I'm using debug now. Well, let's make this a little bit bigger. There we go. That's a bit bigger, isn't it? So let's have a look what in, what is in X. X is an array. It's an array of two objects. So let's have a look at the first object. That array object, sorry, that object, the first one in the array, is what looks like, and we can tell here, um, it looks like a an HTTP response object with a status, a status text, and some headers, and so on. So uh, we've also got x dot data. Okay, so not only do we get the uh, response object with all the HTTP response stuff in it, what Axios does for us, sort of by default, for free, is parse all that uh, data. Because of course, remember that this response um, from Northwind, we've requested uh, JSON, um, is in the payload, it's JSON, okay? It's not a JavaScript object yet, it's, it's, it's JavaScript object notation, which is like an encoded, you know, a serialized version of that or an encoded version of, of a JSON object. And what it's done is parsed that and given it to us as uh, a JavaScript object. So we can say, for example, uh, data.values, which we know from the, um, uh, what, the Java, what the JSON looks like here, oh, value, not values, is that there is inside this map here, a property called value. Uh, so let's just have a look at value. There we go, and that value is an array of 20 things. Guess what these 20 things are? These are the 20 products. Let's have a look at the first one. There it is, product ID one, chai. Um, product ID, uh, supplier ID one, category ID one. Let's have a look at the, the second one here, and so on. Now. If we have a look at the first one of the second object in our response from Axios, we can see that the product ID is 21. It's Sir Rodney Scones, of course. Um, so uh, Axios is a really, really comfortable uh, way of making HTTP requests uh, in the promise context. And we'll dig into this a lot more uh, next time. Uh, but one thing I think would be really nice to do now is uh, to sort of coalesce this stuff, okay? So let's get rid of this stuff. Everybody's still here. We are still online and everything. Uh, yeah, okay. That's really cool. That's really cool. Okay, so um, what we really want to do is sort of bring together all the 40, 20 plus 20 products into a single array, which we can then further process, okay, uh, later down in the chain. So that's really cool. So let's just continue that. Ooh, uh, that was, I'm not on code there. Let's continue that to run to the end. Okay, fine. Okay, let's get rid of that. Um, there we go. And why don't we say now we've got X, 
okay? And why don't we say, because we know what we know what X looks like, we can say, um, what should we say? Uh, oh yeah, okay, in fact, first of all, let's remind ourselves that it's not just one thing, it's an array of things, so let's call it X's. You know, let's just use this X over X's, so X's is a, it's a list of things. Um, and why don't we try and do this sort of um, in a single line here. So uh, X's dot, well, actually, why don't, we, why don't we play around a minute with um, a little bit of node. And if we've got A equals one, two, three, and B equals four, five, six, how do we coalesce these values? Because this is effectively the products in the, in the first response and the products in the second response. We can say, um, ba -ba -da -ba -da -ba -da -ba -da, a dot concat b and we get them all together now a is the same and b is the same so the you know if we are thinking functional functional programming and everything and sort of uh, uh, pure functions what this is really nice because it doesn't uh, modify it doesn't mutate either a or b it just creates a new array so that's really nice we can do that so we'll use this concat feature um, to to coalesce the values from this whole idea. Okay, so um, why don't we why don't we do that now? So uh, what we want to do is actually turn an array of stuff into an uh, into another array of stuff, but we're sort of having to map over stuff. So we'll use a reduce. Okay, so we'll reduce these things, and the reduce takes. I'm not really sure I like this sort of pop up help. It's a bit big. Um, if anybody knows how to turn this off in VS Code, please tell me. Um, and reduce takes. Um, a function which itself takes an accumulator and um, the individual item each time that we're iterating over. Now remember we're iterating over each of the results from these two um, uh, two HTTP requests, okay? So why don't we say here, in fact, why don't we say, first of all, let's get rid of this, how do you, get, how do you move away from that help? There we go, let's put that back there, there we go. Um, what we want to start from is an empty array. We want to, um, it, uh, we want to sort of, coalesce into an empty array. So why don't we say here um, a dot, now what would that be? a dot concat, um, we want to say x dot data dot value, right? We want to concatenate all the values of uh, the data property in that individual x response into whatever is already in a, which is of course at the start, is nothing because we're starting here on the uh, on the uh, empty array. So each time round, it's going to process each of those two in this case responses. Now let's see if that works. So we've got there the reduce, and we've got we need a, to close that there, and then console.log. In fact, why don't we have a breakpoint again? Uh, X console.log. Well, let's call it data actually, not X in this case. Okay, there we go. Let's get rid of that, rid of that thing there. We've got a few, a few minutes left, two minutes left. Let's see if this works. It'd be amazing if this works. Let's just run that now. Uh, here we go. Ba -ba -da -ba -da. Let's go into the debug and let's see. Come on, come on, come on. Oh, yes. So MPJ, uh, Ronnie's mentioned MPJ, which is amazing. Uh, he, he, he's a really, really great guy. He's done fun, fun function. He does his fun, fun function YouTube video thing. Uh, all sorts of functional stuff there. So let's have a look what's in data. Data is an array now of 40 objects. Okay, so uh, we can see those objects here. Each of the objects is a product. Um, so we can, we can now start to see that thinking in terms of functions, and this is not about functional programming, this particular thing, but you know, I do want to sort of drill that into us a little bit. Um, thinking in terms of functions and small pieces loosely joined, we can start to start to have an idea that um, using promises is one thing, but then using of the promise chain and the chain of thens is a really nice way of sort of dividing up the tasks, okay? So actually, of course, what I could do here is let's just run that to completion um, and then go back here and I could just say, for example, then um, console.log. Uh, yeah, console.log. And let's get rid of that there. So you can see, you know, it, it sort of starts to become clean, really, really clean. And notice as well that the output of one of the invocations of then becomes the input to the next invocation then and so on. 
So anyway, uh, it's 8.59. Um, I've covered less than I wanted to here, but let me know in the comments. Let me know on Twitter, because of course the comments disappear when I close the stream and everything and I go away. Whether that was okay. Um, there's plenty more with Axios and plenty more with this that I do want to cover next time. Um, I, you know, I want to almost like exude in the luxury of ES6 and promises and uh, and, 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 and and pure functions and so on. Um, North Zephyr. Ooh, North. That's even better. A better, a better word for the uh, for the for the project. Um, but yeah, I want to show. I want to explore how we can see the beauty of of uh, JavaScript ES6 with Node.js and promises and everything, because that's the sort of Node.js JavaScript that I think we can and should be writing and thinking in terms of in the new world of Cloud Foundry, SAP Cloud Platform, and everything. Um, so this is just the start. I I would show you what um, what I've got to come, but I think it's better if we explore it bit by bit, okay? Anyway, okay, uh, it's nine o'clock, so I've got to close the stream. Thank you so much for joining, and uh, I hope you had fun. Let me know uh, I had fun, even though we didn't cover as much as I wanted to. Uh, so have a great day, have a great evening over in uh, in Australia, Sydney, etc., and see you next time. Thanks very much.